In this project, we're going to build a simple static website on Azure using Terraform, a storage account, and Azure Front Door. We're going to start by registering our domain in the Azure console. Next, we'll deploy an Azure storage account configured for static website hosting. This storage account will store our under construction page in any future web content. Then we'll create an Azure Front Door instance using Terraform. Front Door acts as a global content delivery network that shares your site securely and efficiently from edge locations around the world. Next, we'll map our custom domains, the root domain, and the www subdomain to the front door endpoint. Azure will then automatically validate ownership of those DNS names and provision certificates for HTTPS. Finally, we'll add records in Azure DNS that points our domain to the front door endpoint and also validates the HTTPS certificate. Once the build is complete, you'll be able to visit your new domain and see the under construction page served through front door using HTTPS. Now let's go over the prerequisites to this project. First off, there's a video out there called Azure and Terraform Easy Setup. I'll put a link up at the top. That walks you through creating the proper build identity in the Azure console and extracting out the UUIDs that you need to set as environment variables for your build. So this project is a little bit different than our other project. It's not fully automated. The first step is a manual step. You're going to have to register your domain in the Azure console and create a resource group for that domain. That becomes the two inputs into this project, the domain name and the resource group for the domain. After that, you need the Azure account. That's one with the build identity set up. Then we need the AZ CLI, and then we need the latest version of Terraform. We're going to start by registering the domain in the Azure console. So the first thing we're going to do is going to select the app service domains section of the console. Click on that. And from here, we're going to say create a new domain. So I am going to create a first create a new resource group for this domain. We are going to register it as Mike Mike's Cloud Solutions dot org. So that's going to be actually be our resource group name. Click on that. And now I'm going to put Mike's Cloud Solutions dot org into the domain name. It says it's available. So now we're going to go to contact information and we're going to put our contact information. The one thing that's pretty important here is the country. It will blow chunks if you don't get that right. So I'm going to put the United States. And then I'm going to go to the next panel. Okay. Protection so you can't see that. We'll go to tags. I'm not going to do any tags. We go review and create. And here are our mycloudsolutions.org domain information. We're going to create the resource group. And now we are ready to create. So I'm going to hit create. So once you click on create, the console will bring up this overview panel. And this will allow you to monitor the registration as it happens. The registration typically takes between 20 and 30 minutes. Once the registration is complete, the overview panel will update and it will allow us to go in and view the resource that got created. So I'm going to go on, click go to resource, and it's going to give you the app service domain. This is the thing we will load via a data block to actually do the build. I'm going to go to this manage DNS record section. And once you're in the, into the DNS section, you want to click on record sets. When we work on a website, we're going to add additional records into this record set. Now we're ready to build the code. So the first thing you want to do is want to grab this git clone command and paste that into your Ubuntu development environment. After you've cloned the code, the first thing you want to do is you want to run the check env script. Now check env is going to go through and validate that you meet all the requirements. It's going to check the various commands that need to be there. It's also going to check the various environment variables that need to be set for your build. These are taken out of the Azure console. They're mostly UIDs. Then it's going to take all that and it's going to use the AZ CLI to log into your Azure account with those credentials and make sure you have access. Next thing we need to do is we need to set the domain we created in the resource group that we created. So I'm going to go into the zero website directory and I'm going to edit variables.tf. And there's two variables. You need to verify the domain name. We're going to build in this example, Mike's Cloud Solutions.org. And then you also need to specify 
the DNS resource group name. So those are the two variables that are the input to this. We covered it earlier, manually creating the domain. So now we are ready to run the apply. Now the apply is pretty quick. It only takes about uh, five minutes. The build has completed, so now let's take a look at what got built. The first thing we're going to do is navigate to our new website. So I am going to copy the URL here. I'm going to open a browser tab and show you the under construction page. So that's it for the end result. So now let's go into the Azure console and take a look underneath the hood and see what got built. So the first thing we'll do is go to the resource groups. And there's two resource groups associated with this project. The first one is the manual resource group I created when I registered the domain. And the second resource group is where we put the content. So if I click on the content resource group, we've got two objects. The first one is the storage account. This is where the actual content is stored. And if you wanted to upload more content or different content, you would do it in the storage account. And if I go into containers, and then I click on web. This is where the under construction page lives and is stored. So now let's talk about the front door. The front door is Azure's content delivery network. And so it's got a couple settings. The first one is the origin group. So if I click on the origin group, you're going to see this is the, the origin group is how I associate the storage account with this front door instance. So it's going to pull the source data for this website from the storage account. So you use essentially the storage account URL and you set up a health probe. So that's it for the origin. The next one is you want to say, okay, I've got this account out there and I want it served by these domains. So you attach domains and it will, it will connect to that endpoint. And I, we do two, we have the root domain and we have the WW domain. You can use either one, you're going to get the same website. And so uh, from here, you've got also a certificate. And so these days, everything used to be HTTPS. So when you use a front door and you provision a domain, you can just tell the system, hey, go ahead and allocate me a certificate and you can bring your own, but by default, you can just use the, the native certificates. And that's what's gonna give you HTTPS. So you can, you can see the certificate here by going back to your website and selecting here and say connection is secure and click on certificate and it's going to give you the certificate, who allocated it, how long is it's valid. This was all provisioned for you on your behalf. And the one other piece that's key to this is once you've created the websites, you know, for the certificate and also for these domains, what you have to do is you have to add records to the original domain. So if I go back to the original domain that I registered manually and click on the DNS zone, and click on record set. So the first one is the root website domain mapping. Then we've got these DNS auths. That's what validates certificates. That's what tells the world that, hey, I issued the certificate and I'm con confirming that it's accurate. And then we have the C name. So in addition to the root website, if you do www.cloudsolutions.org, it's gonna write, point you right back to the same front door. So this is the last part of the puzzle where you register the domains. Now, at this point, you want to be good stewards of your account, cloud account. Now, most of the cost is associated with domain, and you can't really register that. Once you have it, you have it for a year, but it's only $10, $15. So what you want to do is go back to your account to run destroy. This will delete everything that we got created and put the domain back into the original state before we did the build.